I wrote this post, but I'm going to make a video about it because it's super, super important. And if you don't have these five things, I guarantee you will fail at this business and you're going to spend all this time and all this money and all this energy and all this focus on something that won't manifest in actual money for you, which is such a shame. But it's mind blowing that as far as I know, and I've watched a lot of different courses online, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. I've attended a lot of seminars, I've paid a lot of money for coaching, and I've joined different masterminds, and nobody says what I'm telling you here to the beginner crowd. Beginners are left floundering. The beginners are left failing because they don't address these five points. I could write an entire book about these five points, so let's get into them one at a time. And I guarantee you, if you have these five things, you will make money. My uncle even made a joke and sent me a DM the other day because I was mentioning that there are five things you need to succeed. And my uncle, who's a multimillionaire, sent me a DM and he's like, do I have these five things? Ha ha. And I went and I looked and I was like, well, yeah, he has the right mindset. He has the right offer. He has definitely the right audience. He definitely has the right sales process and his delivery is amazing. My uncle runs a landscape business and does you know, millions of dollars a year. He's got the mindset. He's got the offer. He's got the audience. He's got the process. He's got the delivery. So let's break these down one at a time. The right mindset. The right mindset. This, this is like an entire book in and of itself. And... Most people will fail at the online business game because their mindset is so bad. They, have, they don't have an abundance mindset. They are very easily distracted. They always seem to want something for nothing. They're very good at blaming. They're very, very bad at taking responsibility. Um, and they just, they, they seriously lack self-belief. And they, I guess, are not aware of the power of self-talk. They're not aware of the power of thoughts. They're not aware of the power of visualization. But the winners are aware of those things. The people who succeed, they have an abundance mentality. They're just naturally, or naturally, I should say, they've probably worked on it. The mindset stuff oftentimes does not come easily. We have to work on it. But <clears throat> they keep themselves in a good vibration, in a good mood. They have an abundance mindset. They don't blame. They take full responsibility. They treat every mistake like a learning lesson. They have fun with the process. They understand that, hey, if, if I get a bad client or someone on the phone doesn't want to buy, hey, that's just part of the game. That's just, it's just, it's a numbers game, right? It's just, we move on to the next person. It's unfortunate, but we learn a lesson. Uh, they, they don't like break down into like self-pity and they, they're not like super emotional about every little thing that happens. It's like, you be emotional, okay, but like, if you're going to experience a negative emotion, like make it quick, <laughs> make it quick, get in and out. Don't stay there. Holy smokes. When you stay in a negative emotion, you're constantly putting that vibration out and you're constantly going to manifest more results back just like it. So the right mindset is key. And a big part of that is aligning, aligning your heart with your head. So when I say mindset, what I'm actually meaning is like your emotion set. I say mindset because no one knows what emotion set means, but emotion set in this case is your heart, your feeling, your vibe, like your belly, your whole being is totally in alignment with what you're thinking about. There's not a disc, there's no, there's no you're not, you don't feel out of alignment. Like you're not thinking like, oh, I should sell somebody on how to um, build a solar business. But in your heart, you're like, I don't like solar. Or a great example, some lady was helping this company in her head. She was helping this company sell more drones so that they could go to war and win the war and like kill people. And she was like legit part of this company selling drones in her, in her head. That's what she was doing every day at work. Her heart was totally out of alignment with that. She's like, I don't want to help this company make drones. I don't want to help feed the war. So it's totally out of alignment. So we want to be aligned with what we actually do. And Jim Rohn has a beautiful quote. He says, learn to work harder on yourself than you do in your business. So a lot of people, most people who are failing, they actually don't have a business problem. They have a personal problem that's bleeding into their business. And so if you can just focus on optimizing you, you'll be optimizing your business. The way I do this, pe people seem to think like I'm just naturally the way I am. I'm definitely not. If you met me in my high school years, you'd be surprised that I'm even making this video right now for you. But I educate myself daily on how to become a better CEO businessman. And I do that with headphones. I have an audiobook app on here called Audible. Sometimes I just download the aud audiobook off Spotify or I get the audiobook off YouTube. And I put that in my ears and I listen to it because what goes in must come out. And if you were raised with really shitty parents or not just shitty parents, but if you were raised with 
poor parents, parents didn't have a lot of money, or if you were raised with parents who thought money was evil or business people were evil. My mom told me growing up that all salespeople are sleazy and, and scammy. So I grew up with that. So I, I hated money for the longest time. It took me until like age 19 before I started to maybe kind of sort of like money. Up until that point, I was like, fuck money. But I retrained myself because I was poor and I retrained myself by listening to audiobooks every single day from rich people explaining how to be rich. And the very first thing they talked about was the mindset and how you can actually use the law of attraction to manifest sales. So I listened to a lot of that for years. They never ended up talking about the bottom four things that I'm going to be talking about, but they did. A lot of the rich people talked about the mindset. So I had the mindset dialed in from day one once I started the business stuff because I just listened to audiobooks on repeat. I didn't have the offer or anything down below, so I didn't actually make any money with it, but the mindset was there. So once I finally did get into all the, all the other stuff, it clicked very, very quickly. So if you're going to win long term, if you're going to win even short term, you have to have the right mindset, and I would recommend you think about what causes a good mindset, what causes a positive mindset, what causes a successful mindset. Well, it's probably the thoughts you're thinking, right? Okay, well, how do I think thoughts that are going to make me rich? Well, you listen to what rich people say, rich people in your niche, rich, rich people in, in the field that you want to become rich in. I watch so many CEO interviews. I've read so many books, listened to so many audiobooks from very rich, successful business owners. And it's like the reason I think the way I think, the reason I perceive the world the way I perceive it is because of these books that I've listened to. And I don't just like, I wasn't born on day one at age zero and I'm like, oh, I'm a rich businessman. No, this was developed. I used to have a horrible work ethic, horrible mindset, and I completely turned it all around by, by putting stuff in my ears. So good input, huge. Next is the right offer. And this is where most people absolutely screw up. A lot of people do, like a lot of people will get to this number two with the right mindset, but they haven't been trained like I've been trained. They haven't studied like I've studied in like what actually sells. So they think like, oh, mindset. Okay, I got the mindset. I want to help people with healing or I want to help people with meditation. I want to help people ascend to the higher level. I want to help people upgrade their life. And it's like none of those things, if you say them like I just said them, will actually sell. You must not be creative with the end result that you're selling. You must pick from the menu right here, and then you can be creative with your branding and you can be creative with your clothing and your process within the course and, and, and how you do the delivery and how you work with clients that you can be creative. Absolutely. But when it comes to actually picking the offer, picking, when I say offer, I, what I really mean is end result. What's the end result? The end result of all the stuff that you go through. Like, why, why are people ultimately paying you? That's the end result. What's the end outcome? What would they be happy to achieve? And it needs to be one of these four things if you want to make sales. End result needs to be better relationships or chronic pain relief or more money or more beauty. The only exception to this is if you're super famous. Like, if you're Oprah or Tony Robbins which a lot of people look up to. And so they get the wrong idea about this because they see these super famous people. Yeah, if, you're, if you have the Oprah Winfrey effect, if you have the Tony Robbins effect, you can sell, you can sell a course on how to draw green trees with the green felt. People will buy it guaranteed. Tony Robbins could sell that. Oprah could sell that. Hey guys, just launched my new course. It's called How to Draw Green Trees with a Green Felt Pen and it'll really help you improve your overall life. Boom, sold, because it's them. But if you're not them, if you're just a mere mortal and you're trying to like get people who don't know who you are, which probably a lot of you are, trying to get people to go from cold to sold, but don't know who you are to actually giving you money, you've got to pick on one of these things. And a great example of this is like if just imagine walking up to somebody on the street or somebody walks up to you on the street. This is better. Somebody walks up to you on the street and they're like, hey, I know you don't know me. My name's Jeremy and I, w I want you to give me a thousand bucks and I will help you feel more aligned with your higher spirit. You'd be like, what? Get out of here, Jeremy. But imagine Jeremy walks up to you now and he says, Hey, I noticed you're walking alone. Do you have a girlfriend? And you might say, no, I don't have a girlfriend. He's like, Hey, well, do you want me to help you get a girlfriend? I can help you get a girlfriend within the next seven days and I'll only charge you a thousand bucks. You might be more inclined to say, yeah, or Hey, 
I noticed Jeremy comes up. Hey, I noticed you're in pain. Looks like your back is in serious pain. Uh, would you pay me a thousand bucks to get rid of that back pain? Boom, you'd pay. Or Jeremy goes up to you and he might be like, hey, I see you walking out of this this uh, McDonald's that you're working at. Uh, it seems to me like I, from the research I did, you're only getting paid 200 bucks per week. Uh, would you want to work with me to get a much higher paying job? I can get you a job at Apple or Google and you only have to pay me a thousand bucks once you get the job. Boom. Or, hey, I noticed... Um, you're quite overweight. Looks like you have quite the gut on you. Would you pay me a thousand bucks to make that flat and give you a, get, a, uh, get you a six pack? Boom, sold. Like somebody can come up to you on the street and pitch you on all four of these things and you probably buy if they did a good enough job pitching. But outside of these four, not going to really be interested. It always has to end in one of these four. And by, and by the way, that, that like a little example I gave you, I, I said, like, imagine that walking down on somebody, somebody walking up to you from the street or outside, but we're not actually outside. We're online. And so when you're in real life, you could sell a few more things. I suppose you could sell like a great place to sleep tonight. You'd be like, hey, do you want to go sleep in that mansion tonight? Right. And in, that, in that case, boom. Or like, hey, you look really thirsty. Would you like to buy some water? Boom. So in real life, you can get away with selling a few more things like delicious meals. Right. Like, hey, you want to come to this restaurant, whatever. But online, you're not going to be selling water. You're not going to be selling meals. You're not going to be selling a stay at a mansion or something, most likely. Um, and even if you were going to sell a stay at a mansion, you're better off catering it, being, hey, do you want to bring your significant other to this beautiful mansion? Or do you want to host a retreat at this mansion so that you can make money from the retreat? Or do you want to do a photo shoot at this mansion? I can make you look super beautiful with these photos. Right. So you can cater to one of these four is still sell really, really well. So if your offer clearly helps somebody with one or more of the four, one or more of the above four, you will sell with ease. I work with some clients one on one. It's very rare, but I do work with one on one clients. But I will only work with a one on one client in private if they sell the one if they sell one of these. I've had a lot of people offer me money to help them sell something that's not one of these four. I won't do it. I turn it down every time. So just make it super obvious what you're selling. Don't hide the fact that you can help someone with one of those four things if you, if you actually can, uh, because there's no nobility in being vague and unclear about your offer. If you're going to be vague and abstract and very creative about it, very poetic about it, do that inside the program. Do that with your clothing. Do that with your backdrop on your videos, but don't do it with the actual end result. Make it super obvious what you help people with. You can also help people with multiples. You can help them with like, I'll help you make, um, I'll help you, uh, relieve chronic pain and become more beautiful at the same time, or I'll help you make more money and improve your relationships. There's a lot of people online that do uh, one or two of them. Actually, they combine them. So next thing you need is the right audience. So whenever someone comes to me with a big audience, I know I can help make a ton of money with ease. If they don't come to me with an audience, then I know we got work to do. And the work is growing that audience with either ads or organic content. Organic content can take some time, so don't expect like overnight success with that. Ads, you can find overnight success. When I first started running ads, I was super surprised with how quickly they worked. I was very skeptical. I was afraid of spending money on ads, but once I did and the money started coming in, I was like, this is freaking amazing. So ads can work, although they are and can be quite fickle, quite a pain in the ass but uh, they can work very quickly. But yeah, when it comes to, when I say growing your audience, I mean, try to grow your free school community and then grow your email list, not just your followers or subscribers. Those are not super important. In fact, people look at my subscriber list on YouTube, they look at my Instagram following, and they're like, Ted doesn't even have that many subscribers, doesn't have that big of a following. How is he possibly making that much money? It's because my free school community email list are very potent sources of prospects. So when you have a big enough audience with the right offer, making sales is super easy and money becomes a joke to you, especially when you combine it with the right sales process. Yeah. But let's, before we move on to number three, because number three is super, super, super important. If somebody comes to me with a big audience, like a really big audience, like they've got 200,000 followers on Instagram or 200,000 people on, in, on YouTube or LinkedIn or whatever, they got big emails and it's very engaged. It's like a healthy audience. It's not just like a big audience of like fake followers, but it's like truly like engaged people. I know it's going to be so easy to make money. If people love you and there's a lot of them, you can make a ton of money. You just got to put the right offer in front of them and it's, you're done. 
In fact, even if your offer kind of sucks, you'll still make a lot of money. But if you do have a great offer, my God, you're going to make a ton of money. So once you, once we go through all five of these things, come back to number three and just focus on number three. Make number three better and 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 better. Bigger, 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 bigger. We call this group that we're in, or at least my free community, is called contentpreneurs. Contentpreneurs, keyword content. So the content is king. Content is queen. When your content's really, really good, sales become super, super easy and growing your audience becomes super, super easy. When I say content, I mean video content, photo content, written content, all the types of content. This will help you actually grow your audience and not just grow the audience, but get your audience to actually freaking love you. Number four is the right sales process. For me, this is the easy part. For others, it's super hard for some reason, but I'm going to make it super, super easy right here for you. So easiest sales process in the world is you upload a video and you say, if this interests you, click below to buy it. Done. Issue with that, though, is that only really works if you're hella famous. So for mere mortals like me and you, perhaps, the second best sales process or made the best one for us is to make content and say, hey, if you found this super helpful and you want this free guide or this mini course that's going to help you implement this stuff, check out the link in the description and get it complete for free. So people watch the social media content. They go and download the free thing. Now they're in your school community. Now they're on your email list. Now you can nurture them. Now you can have a private DM with them. You can get them on a call. You can close them by a conversation. So content to conversation to client is the best sales process for most people. The sales process can vary person to person, niche to niche, offer to offer, whatever. There's like a billion different ways of doing a sales process. But what I just told you, high level overview, content to conversation to client is probably the easiest for most people. How you have those, where you put the content, how you have those conversations, how you work with clients, totally up to you. But if you want more information on the best sales process for you, you can click on this link right here or hop on one of the Zoom calls and we can chat about what it would look like for you. But once you set up a sales process, just stick with it. Don't keep changing it all the time. And then try to get a team to help you execute on it. So you're not doing it all yourself. Finally, the right delivery. So super simple delivery in terms of like what you give people. Give them a school community once they buy and give them some Zoom calls. In addition to this, I guess I could add one more thing, which is like a checklist of daily non-negotiables or a checklist of things they should know. Maybe like an FAQ or even what I've done here, like the five things you need to succeed. If you can just give them like a high level overview of what they need to actually do to succeed, plus you give them the school community, plus you give them the Zoom calls, I think you're good to go. What you can do too is you can take the Zoom calls, get the recordings of them, put them in the school community, and you can write posts like I'm writing right now, add those to the school community. So everything you actually give them, it's all contained within the school community and on Zoom calls. So that's it. If somebody is failing to make money, I promise you, I promise you, they, don't, they, they either don't have the right mindset, don't have the right offer, don't have the right audience because their content's not quite there or hasn't, they haven't been doing it long enough or their sales process isn't there or their delivery isn't there. But every single person who's succeeding, no exceptions, they have all five. So hope you found this video helpful and looking forward to seeing you crush. Stick to these five. Maybe write these five things down, put them on your fridge and ask yourself every day, how am I doing on a scale of one to 10 with my mindset, with my offer, with my audience, with my process, with my delivery. Boom. See you in the next video.